People often ask me about the eye pattern diagram you get when you use a decision feedback equalizer or DFE. It has these strange discontinuities in it and people ask me if there's something wrong with it. In fact, this is how an eye pattern diagram should look with a DFE and this video will explore how and why. Imagine I have a transmitter here transmitting a perfect uh, one logic one, it's a plus one voltage, surrounded by some logic zeros which are minus one volt. The channel is a low pass filter, it kind of smears this bit out and uh, you get inter interference as the one bit kind of smears into the logic zero of the uh, the next bit. And the next bit, which should be a true logic zero, it should be at minus one volt, is actually not quite reaching its true um, value because the previous bit is smearing out into its uh, time slot. So the idea of decision feedback e equalizes is to subtract off the uh, smearing that comes from the previous bit. It does this by slicing the bit, uh, in our case it's a logic one bit, delaying that sliced bit by one unit interval, multiplied by a constant which represents the amount of smearing, in this case it's 10% um, value, just make it a specific example, and then we subtract off that um, uh, amount from the, the next bit and so it returns the uh, voltage closer to the true value which should be a minus one volt for a, a logic zero bit. So that's the idea of the decision feedback equalizer. Let's see how it works in uh, in practice. So if stage one was kind of a th theoretical textbook implementation. This uh, block diagram is a little bit closer to reality. I've replaced the sum block and the slicer with a comparator so I've got kind of a threshold input here and a signal level here. It's the same idea actually, the comparator is identical to a summer and a slicer. Uh, the comparator is a continuous time uh, circuit, so you need to lock in the best eye opening. So you lock with a zero order hold, a sample and hold at the decision point, and then you, you freeze that value for a whole unit interval. You delay it by half a unit interval because you want to update the threshold at the symbol boundary. This is the um, the part of the cycle where you're least interested in. This symbol boundary is uh, the furthest away from the decision point you can get. So the best place to update the threshold is at the uh, symbol boundary. So that's half a unit interval delay. And then uh, that threshold value goes into the comparator. But this idea is the same as the first block diagram. What we're, do, what we're trying to do is to, to improve the eye opening at the comparator so we can improve the decision every time and use that improved decision, the higher probability we get a 1 or a 0, to um, uh, calculate the smearing and subtract it off at the next uh, symbol interval. So uh, what we display in ADS is the difference voltage, the difference between the um, comparator inputs this potential difference, because that tells us the quality of the eye um, that the circuit's giving us. We want to know how open are we making the eye by adding this uh, threshold variation on a bit-to-bit -bit basis. Uh, so that's the um, kind of second level. Now let's see how this works in uh, ADS. The third um, implementation is going to be in ADS. So let's switch over to ADS now. So here's the same thing in ADS, the transmitter is transmitting a pseudorandom bit pattern of 1 gigabit per second. The logic 1 corresponds to 1 volt and logic 0 to minus 1 volt, it's a differential system. The channel is a simple lumped element uh, low pass filter, it's a Butterworth filter with a characteristic um, response time of half a nanosecond, so it's going to smear uh, the bits into one another causing inter interference. I have an eye probe monitoring the eye diagram and waveform at the input to the receiver and another one at the output of the receiver. In the receiver I've enabled this decision feedback equalizer and I happen to know that the optimum tap value for this particular channel is uh, minus 0.1 that I showed you on the previous slide. I'm going to subtract off 10% of uh, you know, 100 millivolts from the um, uh, the next bit based on the previous bit's value, plus or minus. So if I run that one, what we get is the um, eye pattern diagram. 
Uh, what I want to focus on here is the uh, the trace where we have a pattern of one and zero. This this lowest trace here, where the eye is almost closed, is caused by a long sequence of zeros followed by a one and then another long sequence of zeros. The next trace up here, this one, where I've got this marker M2, that is the result of a sequence of 0, 1, 0, 1. So you can follow the trace here that actually goes through here and down here. And the same thing for the opposite. If I've got a, uh, a 1, 0, it'll go down to here and up to here. The reason why I'm going to follow this 1, 0, 1, 0 is visually easy to uh, to follow. And what's happening is that the, uh, the previous uh, zero is preventing my one reaching its full value. It should get to 0.6 of a volt, but it's being inhibited by the fact that the previous bit is smearing into my current bit and reducing the voltage. So what, I, what we do in the t decision feedback equalizer is in the case where the previous bit was a zero, minus one volt, we're going to add in a step here visually you can see this is my uh, logic one. It's been boosted up by 100 millivolts by this decision feedback equalizer. And the same thing is if, if I had a, a logic one followed by a logic zero, I'm going to boost it down by 100 millivolts and shift this pattern here. Visually you can see that the uh, this logic zero has been moved down <coughs> and the eyes opened up as a result. In fact the uh, these delta markers show the eye opening here on this 1010 zero, zero sequence is uh, 680 millivolts versus the previous one without the before the DFE was applied was only 480 millivolts. The difference you see is exactly uh, 200 millivolts corresponding to uh, boosting this trace up by 100 millivolts and this trace down by 100 millivolts. So you get a net benefit of uh, 200 millivolt opening in this case. Now these I pattern diagrams are a little bit difficult to see so I'm going to show you again the same thing but instead I'm going to just run a, uh, a waveform trace and just focus on this 1010 zero, zero pattern because that's the easiest one to visualize what's going on. So to do my 1010 zero, zero pattern I only need a few bits, let's just do 10 bits and uh, I'm going to set up my transmitter instead of doing a pseudo-random bit, I'm going to do a user-defined sequence. It'll do, I uh, only need two bits, one zero, and it'll repeat that um, uh, five times to make a, uh, a sequence of ones and zeros. Just run that one. So now these are my two waveforms that I, I get with that one zero one zero pattern. You can see the input of the receiver I'm getting quite a small uh, voltage swing, which is, corresponds to the eye diagram. You saw that there was um, trace on the eye diagram. But with the DFE uh, applied, this is the output of the receiver, you see these 200 millivolt steps have been inserted. I've basically raised this half of the sine wave, I've pushed up by 100 millivolts, and this half of the sine wave I've pushed down by 100 millivolts, and that's giving a much o a more open eye to the fact that I've applied this decision feedback equalizer. But you can see I've introduced these discontinuities at the um, symbol boundaries because the, um, the filter is a discrete time filter and it's applied on a unit interval by unit interval basis. Every time the unit interval clicks over we have a different uh, value being applied. In this case we're alternating between plus and minus 100 millivolts. But the um, the discontinuities don't concern us because we're actually going to put our decision point right in the middle here. This is the decision point and it's well away from these discontinuities so they don't affect our bit error rate. Um, they're actually uh, out of phase with our decision point. So that's how the decision feedback equalizer works and this is why we get these discontinuities at the symbol boundaries and it's kind of an inherent part of the discrete time filtering that makes up uh, decision feedback equalizers. So I hope this help explains the, um, the eye diagram that we see in, uh, in decision feedback equalizers.